All right, here we are again. This is a continuation of the material on which you'll be tested on your third exam. It is found in part K, which deals with the concept of electric charge and other things. The symbol for the electric charge associated with an object is lowercase q, reminds you of the word quantity, so we're talking about the quantity of this essence called electric charge. The units, the standard international units for electric charge are coulombs, named after a French person, Charles Augustine de Coulomb, and we abbreviate the word coulomb, uppercase c. The electron is an example of an object that has electric charge. The quantity Q of its electric charge is a negative number, shown here. Negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. The proton likewise has an electric charge. It's the same amount shown, in here, shown here for the electron, except there's a, not a negative sign in front of the quantity of charge Q for a proton. They're both the same numbers, opposite signs. These numbers, 1.6, 10 to the negative 19, occur so often in our studies of electric charge and later electric force that to simplify our writing and our discussing, we let the symbol lowercase e stand for that 1.6 number. Now let's talk about atoms. Why don't we talk about the atom called chlorine? It's on the periodic table in the lecture hall. It has 17 protons. It's number 17, by the way, on the periodic table of the elements. It's, it has 17 protons in its nucleus, and orbiting the nucleus are 17 electrons. So you have 17 positive charges, and 17 negative charges, you add them all up, the net charge of an atom is zero. We say the atom is a neutral object. Now let's add one electron to the chlorine atom. No longer is it called an atom, it's called by another name, which I'll give you in a moment. But now you have the original 17 protons, but now one more electron, a total of 18 electrons. So 17 of the protons cancel out, 17 of the electrons, but there's one more negatively charged object, one more electron. So the net charge of this object is negative E, negative E. And we symbolize the object that's created as Cl with a negative superscript. And it's called the chlorine ion. An ion is a, an atom that was now no longer an atom because there's been an electron added to it. And you can do the reverse. You can remove electrons to create an ion out of an atom. The, the charge of the chlorine ion is shown here. It's negative E. Now let's look at magnesium. Magnesium is the 12th atom in the periodic table, the 12th element, I could say. And it has 12 protons in its nucleus and 12 electrons to make the atom neutral. 12 positives, 12 negatives, add them all together is zero. Well, if we remove two electrons from the outermost orbit of magnesium, you'll still have your 12 protons, but now only 10 electrons. So you have two more protons than you have electrons. So there's an excess charge, a net charge, we say, a total charge of two times what the proton charge is, or two times E. And we symbolize that object this way, Mg, this is a symbol for magnesium, and put a double plus superscript there to create the magnesium ion. Well, now let's talk about the force that any two charged objects, no matter how far apart they are, exert on each other. Before we continue, remember Newton's third law. Whatever one agent does to a second, the second does to the first. So if 
one agent pushes on a second thing, the second thing pushes with an equal force on the first thing. And so let us look at two positively charged objects separated by who knows what distance. They exert a repulsive force on each other. The one pushes this way on the other, and the other pushes this way on the first. Now let's look at two negatively charged objects. The one pushes this way on the other, and the other pushes the opposite way on the first one. So they're equal but opposite pushes that each of these two charged objects experiences. We'll talk about how to calculate the value of these forces in a moment. Now let's look at two oppositely charged objects, a positively charged object, a negatively charged object. These objects pull on each other in contrast to these pairs of charged objects which push on each other. These attract. So here we have a force of attraction. Here we had forces of repulsion. Now how do you calculate the value of these pushes or pulls? It's shown in the red box, which I skipped over, saving it for last, the best for last. This is the electric force law. It involves a universal constant, symbolizes K, shown here. Pretty ugly looking number. 9 times 10 to the 9th, Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. And so the force between any two charged objects is given by this equation where, please note, uppercase Q stands for the absolute value of the charges. And I indicate that up here. Uppercase Q is the absolute value of whatever is the quantity of charge Q, which could be negative, it could be positive. And so we see that the electric force between two objects, whether it's a push or a pull, is KQQ over R squared. And so we have the positive times the positive times the positive divided by the square of the distance between the objects. This equation is quite analogous to the gravitational force equation you saw many, many days ago, where instead of a, a K here, you had the gravitational constant capital G, and st instead of Q's, you had M1 and M2 for the masses, and you had the same thing downstairs. So let's summarize. We're going to let uppercase Q represent the absolute value of whatever a charge is, and I show two charges of magnitudes Q1 and Q2 uppercase separated by distance R. They each exert a force on each other. It will depend upon the signs of the two charges, whether the force is an attractive one or a repulsive one. The electric force constant is 9 times 10 to the 9th ugly units. The force that one exerts on the other and the other on the first one is symbolized as F. K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Here we show repulsion, repulsion, attraction. The rule that we use for charged objects of the same sign is that we say likes, meaning alike charged signs. Alikes or likes repel, but unlikes attract. You see, you would see a similar behavior for magnets. The same polarities facing each other north to north or south to south would cause the two magnets to repel each other, but opposite poles, opposite polarities, north and south or south and north would attract. In the next lecture, we'll work a number of examples involving a calculation of the electric force that one charge exerts on another or even two charges exerts on another using this equation.